nature of the self, shuttling between the three states of waking, jagrat, dream, swapna and sushupti or deep sleep. And it also gave the concept of Asparsha Yoga, the intangible yoga, the paved path to non-dualist doctrine of Advaita, Brahma Satchin Jagannatha. So friends, the basic concepts of the Upanishads are describing at least six angas of the yoga, whereas Patanjali came out with the eight angas, Ashtanga Yoga. We are starting with Yama and Yama, adding on to the conventional six angas explained in the other Upanishads. So till now we have discussed the evolution of yoga through the Vedas, the Indus Valley civilization, through the Vedic literature and also through the Upanishadic age. Now coming to the Itihasa age, the Ramayana and Mahabharata, the period links the development of yogic concepts between esoteric teachings of the Upanishads and the classical treatment of Patanjali Yoga. So the Patanjali came much later. So whatever evolved as yoga from the Vedas, Upanishads, through the Ramayana and Mahabharata periods has finally taken shape as Ashtanga Yoga of Patanjali. In Ramayana, one can trace yogic practices of Yama and Niyama in the form of truthfulness, Satya, Ahimsa, non -harm. The evolution of yogic framework and philosophy from the Indus Valley, Saraswati Valley civilization to the Vedic period, to the Upanishadic period and to the epic period, finally to Bhagavad Gita and emerged in the classical yoga, in the classical age, where the hitherto available fragmented concepts of yoga tradition were collected, synthesized and systematized by none other than Patanjali Maharshi. He gave the yoga tradition its classical format and hence his yoga is referred to as classical yoga, yoga darshana, yoga sutras of Patanjali. The classical yoga represents the climax for a long development process of the yogic technology. Most important principles of yoga theory and practices were masterly defined with great amount of refinement and perfection and described as sutras which can be expanded and it can be commented and there is a Vyasa Bhashya to these Patanjali Yoga Sutras. During this period yoga has developed into a philosophical system according to which one of the six darshanas, the yoga philosophy, the result of Samyoga of Prakriti and Purusha, of the Sankhya framework, this world is made up of three gunas, Sattva guna, Raja guna and Tamo guna. All miseries are due to the ignorance, avidya of the true nature of the reality and the kaivalya, liberation, is removal of avidya. It is not that anything to be newly achieved, but removal of the avidya is kaivalya. Dana deva to kaivalyam. Kaivalyam means moksha or liberation or emancipation. This can be achieved by practice abhyasa and detachment. Abhyasa of the meditation, abhyasa vairagya, abhyamta, nirodha. The mind can be calmed down to the practice of yogic techniques like meditation and having detachment or dispassion. Uh, no having no desires to be hampered around about. Patanjali defines yoga as the chitta vritti nirodha. For him yoga is totally a psycho-spiritual technology. Every effort in the attenuation of mental activity is called yoga. Nirodha means attenuation of the action of the mental activity. It is transformation of empirical personality into transcendental one. The basic animalistic or guna based, tamo guna, rajo guna based activities in the mind are arrested and mind is brought to the sattvic level and then it can go beyond the sattvic level. The experimental element which results in the transcendence, the ultimate transcendence is called samadhi and the chittavritti nirodha is mentioned to reach samadhi, balance equilibrium of deep absorption in nature. Unique feature of Patanjali Yoga is eightfold practice of Ashtanga Yoga, Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Prachahara, Dharana and Dhyana and Samadhi. Observation of moral codes to purify the mind is regarded as the foundation of yoga and that is Yama Niyama. Practice of asanas is a part of physical purificatory method to have fitness, to have health and strength and energy which is acquired through the importance of the later Hatha Yoga texts. So today most of the yoga teachers all over the globe 
we focus only on the asanas, as if asana is the ultimate. Though it is an important anga of yoga, there are many other angas. The supernatural power siddhis which are acquired through the practitioner, through the yoga, higher levels of yoga, are described in the third chapter of Patanjali Yoga Sutras. And, but Patanjali wants that a yogi should not be carried away with those powers because he will not be able to progress further if he gets trapped into the exercising of those powers. For Patanjali, liberation is not a state where an individual self joins the universe self, but disjunction, the yoga of the relationship between Purusha and Prakriti. Purusha is already the universal self. By his contact with Prakriti, he assumes an individual soul role, like Ishwara under the effect of Maya becomes Jiva. He also introduced the concept of Ishwara. And Ishwara of Patanjali is not the supreme absolute in the sense of creator, sustainer and destroy the world, but only as an instrument in the process of yoga. He helps the practitioner in removing the obstacles on the path of liberation. During the classical age, most of the philosophical systems of India took their origin. All of them had derived their preliminary concepts from the Vedas. The scheme of yoga was so systematic and universal that the philosophical schools, darshanas, including Jainism and Buddhism, even though they are not Vedic, have somehow or the other accommodated and integrated the concepts of yoga with their own frameworks to realize the ultimate truth. Thus, yoga has been accepted as a practical path leading to the realization of the ultimate reality in all the different schools of Indian philosophy, both Vedic and non-Vedic. As we have discussed already, the Vedic schools of philosophy are the six darshanas, Sankhya, Yoga, Nyaya, Vaisishka, Mimamsa and Vedanta, whereas the non-Vedic schools of darshanas are Buddha, Jaina, Charvaka, Lokayata, who are atheistic, but they also accommodated yoga. And interestingly, the non-Indian religions, origin like the Abrahamic religions, they all have bhakti in their core principle of devotion and worship and prayer, which is nothing but bhakti yoga. They all accept the existence of Ishwara in one form or the other, in one, one name or the other, either Allah, Yahuwah, etc., etc. But they all accept the Supreme Being and the devotion to the Supreme Being as Bhakti Yoga. So therefore you can see, Yoga is existing in not only in all the religions and philosophical systems within India, but even those who are originated outside India carry Yoga in them. Therefore, it can be said that they were also somewhat connected or even derived from our Vedic Sanatana Dharma in one form or the other, though they deviated at points and though they are contradicting at many points. The Puranic age. Now in this age, the tradition called Tantra has been developed. The tradition considers the feminine power Shakti as the ultimate truth, creator, sustainer and destroyer of this world. Here one can find elaborate practice of yogic concepts like Dhyana and Samadhi. And we have Amachara and Rakshanachara, two types of Tantra. And the greatness of this trend has its acceptance of people from all folds of Hinduism as its practitioners. That means the Shaktayas, of course, are Tantrics. We also have other schools of Hinduism. This psycho-spiritual path was so powerful that it has influence in the spiritual life of Hindus, Buddhists and Jains as well. During this period, Puranas were created based on much older Puranic tradition dating back to the Vedas. So Puranas were definitely created much later, recently, but there is existing an older Puranic tradition dating back to the Vedas themselves. That's why you find the stories of the Vedas, the phenomena described in the Vedas being described as stories of Puranas. Many of them were influenced by Tantras and contain valuable information about Yoga. There, those stories are the sacred histories with philosophical, mythological and ritualistic concepts. They are the Vedas for the general public. Puranas are nothing but the Vedas for the general public because the language of the Vedas is very complex and archaic and the, to be able to learn the Vedas and understand is a very difficult process. General public cannot afford to do that. So Puranas were created out of the same knowledge of the Vedas for simplification for the purpose of general public. And there are several Puranas out of which only 18 are treated as Mahapuranas. Normally we think only 18 Puranas are there, but there are many more. But 18 are the Mahapuranas. And all the Puranas accepted Yoga 
as a practical method to control body and mind. It is so surprising that yoga is accepted everywhere. It is accepted in the Dust Valley Civilization. It is practiced. It is explained and practiced in Vedic Civilization, Vedic texts, the Upanishadic texts, and the Itihasas, Mahabharata and Ramayana. And also in the Puranic age, the classical age of the Sutra period of Patamaliya Vakashana, the Puranic age of the 18 Puranas, Mahapuranas, explaining yoga. The Brahma Purana, for example, Will Smith dealing with yoga says that one should start yoga abhyasa before studying Vedas, Puranas and Indrasas. It has discussed much about the place, time, diet and mental condition, yoga practice. That means the practical lifestyle details of yoga practice are a compulsory for one and all. The Padma Purana speaks of Kriya Yoga. The Vai Purana contains Maheshwar Yoga, consisting of Pranayama, Dhyana, Pachara, Dharana and Smarana. Bhagavad Purana speaks of Bhakti Yoga. The Linga Purana introduced the eightfold path of Patanjali as the only means to realize God. So you can see the integration of Shaivism with Yoga on one side and Bhakti Yoga and Vaishnavism on the other side and Tantra also on the third side. The Ashtanga Yoga of Patanjali has been spoken of in the Kurma Yoga Purana, Garuda Purana, Agni Purana, Markandeya Purana and many other Puranas too. The practice of Kundalini Yoga is striking in Devi Bhagavata Purana. So friends, there is a continuous integration across the literature of India which is possible only through the common thread of yoga and through everyone. So the Puranic age contains numerous references to variety of yogic practices. More or less they are all adopted to Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga, which is already there by then, with only a difference of God concept as ultimate reality. So the concept of God explained in the Puranas, either as Shiva or Vishnu or Shakti, is far larger than the concept of Ishwara given by Patanjali. The modern age, the tantric culture of India followed by the Bhakti movement, this emotional dimension of psycho-spiritual movement resulted in the rise of Vaishnavism, Shaivism and Shaktism. Tantra played an important role in this movement. The Agamas came out of Tantra. The Tantra positive and negative forces of the body are balanced and united to get psycho-spiritual transformation. So basically it is a question of reaching balance. Samatvam Yoga Uchyate, within yourself, how to reach balance between various types of opposite forces, the Trigunas, the body, breathing and mind and intellect and also the equilibrium. Balance or equilibrium is defined as yoga. This is the theme and practice of Hatha Yoga. Based on the principles and practices, several yoga Upanishads were developed like Brahma Vidya, Amrita Upanishad, Amrita Nada Upanishad, Amrita Bindu Upanishad, Nada Bindu Upanishad, Jnana Bindu Upanishad, Tejo Bindu Upanishad, Kausika Upanishad, Yoga Chudamani Upanishad, Sandil Yoga Upanishad. Out of 108 Upanishads, out of 20 are Yoga Upanishads. The Siddha movement of the Indian culture dominated in society during 8th century and Siddha means accomplished or perfected. This is a Tantric cult. Siddha is one who got Siddhi, ultimate perfection and gained liberation. He also acquires all types of supernatural powers. Through this process and which is unique in Hinduism and Buddhism known as Hatha Yoga. Supernatural powers like flying in the air, or reading the mind, telling the future. Chief representative of Hatha Yoga cult are Gorakhnath, Goraksha, and Matsendranath. The Nath cult started with them only, even though Lord Shiva is said to be the source of Hatha Yoga. The technology of Hatha Yoga is hidden in its name itself. It is a conjunction of sun and moon. Hatha means Ha and Tha, two letters. The sun and the moon, positive and negative, heat and cold. These two forces entwine the central force called Sushumna, in which the Kundalini Shakti moves. When both are balanced, then the Sushumna is opened up with the Kundalini arising and it goes from Chakra to Chakra up to the Sahasrara Chakra. This movement of Kundalini power from Muladhara to Sahasrara is called Chakra Bhedana, which is crucial in Hatha Yoga. And Goraksha wrote Hatha Yoga, Goraksha Paddhati, Goraksha Shataka and Hatha Ratnavali and other texts, at least six texts known. And Hatha Yoga Pradipika was composed by Swatma Rama Yogendra in the 14th century in a classical manual, as a well-known classical manual of Hatha Yoga today. This was commented by Brahmananda of 18th century in the name of Jyotsna and Hatha Ratnavali of 17th century and 
ಘೇರ ಸಂಹಿತ ಸೆವೆಂಟೀನ್ ಸೆಂಚುರಿ ಶಿವ ಸಂಹಿತ ಏಯ್ಟೀನ್ ಸೆಂಚುರಿ ಹಟ ಶಂಕಟ ಚಂದ್ರಿಕಾ ಆ ಸಮಾಜ ಅದ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಟ ಯೋಗ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಮಾಡರ್ನ್ ಏಜ್ ಯೋಗ ಏ ಆಸ್ ಎ ಎಟರ್ನಲ್ ರಿವರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದಿ ಏಜಸ್ ಕ್ರಾಸಿಂಗ್ ಮೆನಿ ಹೆಡ್ಜಸ್ ಇನ್ ಬ್ರಿಡ್ಜಸ್ ರೀಚ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಶೇಪ್ ಒರಿಜಿನಲ್ ಯೋಗ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ ಬಟ್ ಮೆನಿ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ಸ್ ಅಡಾಪ್ಟೆಡ್ ಯೋಗ ಆಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನಲ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಅ ವಂಡರ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಯೋಗ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ ಆಲ್ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ಸ್ ಅಡಾಪ್ಟೆಡ್ ಯೋಗ ಆಸ್ ದರ್ ಸೆಂಟ್ರಲ್ ಥೀಮ್ ಸೊ ಯೋಗ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅಟಾರ್ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ entire universe of discourse yoga is a systematic science by the practice of which one can realize one's true self shedding all imperfections imperfections of the body mind and psyche thus yoga is a holistic science